Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Welcome this morning. Y'all ready to worship this morning? All right. As we play this next song, just want you to stand up, shake the hands around, around those around you, and uh, welcome. Let them know you're glad that they're here to worship with us. And good morning, visitors. It's good to have you this morning. If it's your first visit, we'd like for you to stop at the Welcome Center and receive your gift. Announcements, upcoming events. A busy October. 
And it all starts on the 8th. It's WCSC Fall Rally Indicator, CK Amix. Sorry. Um, the lady who's in charge of that has had COVID and she's not very well, so I don't think the event is even going to happen and I can't be there, so just kind of ignore that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Ignore it. Yeah, okay. All right, so much for that. December the 10th, or December. Hey, we're ready. Christmas, October the 10th, Deacon and Elders. 5.30, church council at 6.30. And a big one coming up on the 14th and 15th is Ladies' Prayer Retreat, October 14th, 15th at Charleston. It's starting at 5.30 on Friday and Saturday. See Nita Stiff on that. She will have a sign-up sheet out there today as well. Right? Today? Okay. Remember that. And uh, the 16th is the 148th homecoming for the East Harrison. So it's going to be a big day, exciting day. So remember that. Uh, any more announcements? Yes, ma'am. My Sunday school class, we're called the Amen Corner, uh, is going to be doing a fundraiser. It's a special fundraiser for a very dear couple that we have in this church. This couple, you know, with the shoebox ministry, all the money's going to go to the shoebox ministry. But, you know, with that shoebox ministry, we have a couple that works so hard. They don't work just these few months. They start in January. And they start working and collecting items. And um, they put so much of their time and energy and resources into it. In case you haven't figured out who I'm talking about, it's Frank and Juanita Deer. They're a very humble. Honor them in some way. And um, so what we thought is we'd have a fundraiser, and all the funds will go to the shoebox ministry. We're calling it our Dear Frank fundraiser. You can thank Melly Turner for that name. Uh, but what we'll is we will be collecting orders for homemade soup, and we'll collect the orders all the month of October. And then on Sunday, October 30th, your homemade soup will be ready for you to pick up and take home. Um, We'll be selling chili with beans, chili without beans, vegetable beef soup, broccoli cheese soup, taco soup, and also um, lemon chicken orzo soup. If you want to know about that, talk to Mary Holman. It's a soup that she makes that you know, is, is wonderful. But you'll be able to place your orders any time during the month of October. There's order forms out on the Welcome Center. And then on the 30th of October, you can pick it up. We're on donations, a minimum of $5 for a pint of soup or $10 for a quart, um, which is only $2.50 for a homemade bowl of soup. So that's pretty inexpensive. If you want to donate more, we'll certainly accept it. But you figure this church, a church this size, to be able to do 500 shoe boxes is amazing. And it doesn't take a lot of math to figure 500 shoe boxes with $10 a piece on postage. That's $5,000 in postage alone that this church does. And none of this. honor them although they don't want the honor so this fundraiser is kind of our way of saying thank you for all you do and uh, so please get behind it the order forms will be at the welcome center order some soup and um, it will be ready October 30th thank you yes <laughs> yeah there's 
lot going on getting them ready. We, uh, Sam stayed over Tuesday after Sam's and helped get stuff, some of that stuff ready. I'll tell you what, whew, I'll take my hat off to them folks. They're doing an excellent job. Men. Any more announcements? Yes. Just for those of you who haven't heard, Beck and Ryan had their baby on a Thursday, Amen. Thursday evening at 11:39. Named him Henry Christopher Ruddle. Uh, he was seven pounds, 13.2 ounces, and 19 and a half inches long. And everybody's doing well. Amen. And great grandparents. Yes. Pray for Debbie LaPlante. Yes. Any more? June? Well, I haven't got there yet. Okay. You're bucking my sister. I got a phone call last night from Harold Ames saying that last Tuesday afternoon, Mary Ellen was running the sweeper. And he heard a thud, and Mary Ellen had fallen, and she's not doing very well. So we need to be in prayer for Harold and Mary Ellen. What? Yeah, she's at home. So. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Remember Julene, she's having hip surgery in the morning, seven thirty. So keep her in your prayers, remember her and Jerry and the whole deal there. I told her by next Sunday she's gonna be walking. Remember Jackie Janes, she's having hip surgery on Tuesday. So remember her and Kevin, that whole deal there. And uh, Dave. Okay, Dave had surgery on his shoulder this past week. He's up and going. Okay. Linda Warfel had her um, surgery last Thursday, I believe. Gordon, is Linda doing pretty well? Okay. Good, good. Keep praying for Linda. Remember her? Remember David LaPlane? She had surgery on her neck. And... Uh, she is home, right? She's back in the hospital. Okay, remember Debbie. What's that? I guess she's back in the hospital. Okay. Remember her? Any more prayer requests? Um, I wanted to say praise. My mom got to get up and go to her class reunion party last night, and it was a praise. All right, amen. Anybody else? Lynn, Lynn's still sick. Remember Lynn Taylor? 
been sick about a week now. They're lost their voice, different things. We got a lot of people down with the sickness right now. Let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, she's passing a card around to sign for Tony. So if you haven't got a chance to sign it, his sister's in the back there. She's got a chance to sign it. Sign it so she can get it sent to him. Anything else? If not, let's go to Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to pause. We just thank you for this day, Lord. We do thank you for each and every one that's here today, Lord. Lord, we just want to lift the upcoming needs, Lord. We lift Julene as she's having surgery in the morning, Lord. We just ask you to be at the doctors, give them the wisdom they need, Lord. And just pray the surgery will be a success, Lord, and she'll be up walking and going good before we know it. Bid Jerry as he's with her and just give him both the strength. Lord, we thank of Jackie too on Tuesday, Lord, as she's having surgery. Lord, just we lift the doctors there, Lord, and, and be with them and, and uh, be with that surgery there. <clears throat> Lord, we thank of Debbie LaPlante, Lord, when she's in the hospital with this surgery she just had, Lord, we just ask you to be with her, strengthen her, and and whatever the situation is there, Lord, we just ask you to, to heal her body. Lord, there's others that need our prayers this morning, Lord. You know each and every one of them, Lord. We just ask you to, to be with them and, and uh, give them the healing they need, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, for someone here this morning, Lord, that doesn't know you, we ask that they walk, they walk the aisle for you, Lord. Be with Chris as he brings the message, Lord, and, and just touch their hearts. Let's watch over us. Give us a good day, Lord. We ask this in your most precious name. <clears throat> Amen.
seen here this morning we have our friends Bob and Judy Elke back with us we're so glad to have them and most of you know that they've been in our praise team before before they moved to near Springfield Missouri um, and also Judy and I have done a lot of piano flute duets in the past and we've added Ruger with us today uh, yay and uh, we're going to be playing something short and something fast, but hope you, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And it's called Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. Okay, here we go. Joshua fit the 
next times. Good morning. Thank you, Judy, Millie, and Ruger. That was beautiful. Uh, next time, maybe Ruger will sing a solo. What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. Yeah, you can. I'll get you there one of these days. All right. Well, good morning. I'm glad you're here. Oh, let's, uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we come before you to give you thanks for this day. And Lord, I just ask you right now, you just meet us here today. Father, just let your presence be known. Father, speak to us through your word. Father, uh, just let this be all about you, less about me. Father, just let the words come out. It'll be your words, not mine. And we just ask it all in your heavenly name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Scripture today is Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And it says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things. You do not know. Do you believe in prayer? Do you believe in prayer? Really, do you believe in prayer? Amen. All right. I have a story. This story, supposedly, is true. It's about a lady and how she became to believe in prayer. One summer Saturday morning, a preacher was out in his yard working, and he hears this little kitten meowing. The kitten's up on this tree, too high for him to reach, he tried everything to coax it down. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. He went in the house and got a glass of warm milk and, and set it down there. And the cat still wouldn't come down. So he said, Lord, what do I do? He comes up with this great idea. He goes and gets a rope. Slings it up in the tree, hooks a limb, ties it off, and then he ties it off to the bumper of his car. And he inches forward, and he inches forward, and as the tree comes down, he's thinking, as soon as it gets down low enough, the cat will jump off, or I can reach up and set it off safely. And it gets down, and he's watching it out the window, and he's really getting closer and closer, and he thinks, okay, I can reach it. So he stops the car, and he gets out, and suddenly it goes, boing! The rope broke, sending the tree back up, slinging the cat into the sky. The story probably would have ended there if it was me, because I'm not a cat lover, okay? I would have probably found it funny. Uh, but th the preacher gets out and he starts walking around the neighborhood asking about anybody see a flying cat? <laughs> After about an hour or so, he finally gives up and he goes home. Monday morning. He's at the grocery store, and he's pushing his cart, and he runs into one of his members' congregation, and the lady's standing there, and they're having a conversation. And he noticed he looks down at her cart, and she's got a bag of cat food. And he knows she has expressed her dislike for cats several times. And he's like, how do I bring this up? And he keeps talking with her, and he finally just, he just had to ask, why are you buying cat food? If you don't like cats, you have made it known that you don't like cats. Why are you buying cat food? She said, well, preacher, let me tell you this. And you're not going to believe this story, but let me tell you. Our daughter has asked several times for the last couple months, can we have a cat? And she says, no, no, she says, I, I have refused and refused and refused. And she says, last Saturday morning, she came to me and she says she just was relentless. 
And she said, I finally said, well, if God gives you a cat, you can have it. She goes, she ran out the front door, got down on her knees in the front yard and started praying to God. You won't believe what happened next. God granted that prayer because here comes this cat meowing to high heaven and landing on all fours right in front of her. That's while I'm buying cat food. So do you really believe in prayer? I know the answer is yes to that. But I also suspect that the practice of our faith in prayer could be so much more. That is the purpose of this message today. I want us as individuals and as a whole church to be the kind of people and the kind of church that when we pray, that we're more surprised when God does not answer our prayers than when he does. Did you hear that? I want you to be that kind of people. I want us to be that kind of church when we pray that God doesn't surprise us when he does not answer. S.D. Gordon wrote this, the great people of the earth today are the people who pray. I don't mean those who talk about prayer. And I don't mean those who believe in prayer nor yet those who explain about prayer, but I mean those people who take the time to pray. You know, Jeremiah lived 600 years before Jesus did. Jerusalem had fallen at this time. The exiles had been taken away to Babylon. Jeremiah had a big task in front of him as the prophet. He had to call a nation to repent, to repent and trust God despite everything that was going on with them. It looked kind of dark and bleak. Jeremiah had to have them tell him, that it's, it's okay, we still need to trust God. We have got to pray to God. Got to have that faith. But there's other prophets in that area that were telling them that we need to put our trust in the military, in our political parties, kind of sound like some of the stuff that goes on today. But what did Jeremiah tell them? He tells them, we don't put our trust in chariots. We don't put our trust in things of this world. We put our trust in God. We put our faith in God. Jeremiah kept saying that their strength was not in those chariots, that they needed to get serious about seeking God. You hear that, folks? It's time that we get serious here about seeking God Almighty. It's about when we come before Him, seeking with all our hearts His will for this church. Seeking Him and seeking His will for what's going on in our lives. A few chapters before this in Jeremiah 29, we get to hear about the heart of God, who we're going to pray to. And it reads like this. This is what the Lord God Almighty of Israel says to all those who carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He said, build your houses, settle down. Plant your gardens, eat their produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons, give your daughters to marriage, so that they may have sons and daughters and increase in number. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of that city to which you have carried into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because it prospers. Are we praying for our city? You know, they were in exile and they were praying for their city. Are we, as a church, praying for our community? You know, if it prospers, we prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. 
Do not let the prophets and the visitors among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you and in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years have completed from Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me. Come to me. Pray to me. And I will listen. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Man, what a promise. What a promise God has given them. Do you guys get that? He's given that to you too. Do you guys see that promise? Man, what a promise that we get to seek the God of our creation with all our hearts, and he's going to answer us. He wants to hear from you today. Jeremiah, in that first part of that verse of 33, we're going to try to take that apart. It says, call to me. Call to me. Do you guys understand what that is? That's a command. Prayer is a command. It's not an option. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Call to me is what the God is telling us. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. So when we are supposed to seek his face? Always, always. Seek his face always. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock at the door and it shall be open. You know, Jesus sat there at his final night at that table with his disciples. And he claimed the promise of prayer. All these come out of John 14, 15, and 16. It says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. John 15. If you remain in me, and I, and if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves my disciples. What kind of fruit are we bearing, folks? What kind of fruit are we bearing? John 15, in that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. And your joy, and your joy will be complete. Are you lacking joy? Are you lacking joy? Then you need to spend time with the Heavenly Father. Why are we commanded to pray? Hmm. Why are we commanded to pray? Prayer's a good thing, right? Hmm. We receive blessings when we pray. So, why are we commanded? Why would anybody neglect? those blessings in their lives if they don't want to pray. Well, maybe it's... uh, Some of us are are discouraged. Ask God for something and when it doesn't happen in our timetable, does that make you discouraged? I know some people it does. like the Israelites when they're in Babylon and captive. They were discouraged. But 
There is a promise of prayer. We think that prayer is all about getting what we want and what we need. Sometimes uh, that's not what we need. When that doesn't happen on our timetable, we really, really do get discouraged. Prayer is all about building that relationship. I know you've heard me say that more than once. Building a relationship with that Heavenly Father. That's, when we build that relationship, that means we're seeking His face. We're seeking His will, not ours. His will. Seeking what glorifies Him regardless of what happens around us. You know, sin, maybe sin keeps us from praying. Do you ever think about that? It says in Isaiah 59, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear, but our iniquities that have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that you will so that he will not hear sin needs to be repented so that he hears that you may receive those blessings Adam and Eve had to hide from God instead of seeking him in the midst of that garden because of their sin you know prayerlessness or prayerlessness it's simply just unbelief. Maybe we don't believe God cares. You know, I'm going through some major struggles in my life. And I've asked God, take them away. And guess what? He didn't. You know, I've been through those struggles myself. Struggles will start in a new job and then end up really sick. Being airlifted from here to St. Louis, off of work for a long time, recovering. And through that time, watching my daughter and my wife tend to my wounds daily, not being able to provide for my family. It's watching my church that I was active in at that time not, not shade my door. They were supposed to be my family, I thought. That was who they were to take care of times like this. I've been through those struggles, folks. When there was prayerlessness, I thought, did God really care? Did God really care? He's put me through all this. For what? For such a time as this. Maybe you're going through your struggles to build that character. But you're going to be able to witness to somebody else that's going through the same thing. Because I have been there. I've laid in that hospital bed. I've been to all those therapy appointments. I've cried out to God wondering, how am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to feed my family? You know what? We didn't go hungry. Bills may have been late, but we still had a roof over our heads. I may have been the total biggest jack wagon you ever seen to my family through that time. But God was there. He was there. I just 
doesn't pay attention. And that's all he's asking for. Seek me with all your face. Seek me with everything you got, with all your heart. But first we have to repent. And he will hear you. I did not repent. I became angry. If we look at that second part of that verse, it says, I will answer you. I will answer you. He will. Once you bring it to the cross or the altar and you let go of it, He's going to answer you. He's going to answer you. John Wesley taught this about prayer. God will do nothing but in answer to prayer. Prayer is not simply a meditation. It's not good vibes. It's not higher thoughts. It's not about self-counseling. Prayer is a verbal command with the living God who hears and answers. Earth prays, heaven responds. Faith calls, God answers. Now that last part of that text says, tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So let me ask you this. So what's the limits to our prayers? What is the limit? What is the p- potential limit to a prayer? No limit. Nothing too big for God? Nothing too small? Hmm. Nothing too insignificant? Nothing too difficult? Hmm. Maybe one. Anybody hear about the man that was on California Beach? As he was praying, anybody? Nope. Well, good. I got a new story to tell you. This guy was walking down to California Beach, and he was praying to God. And he says, Lord, you say you'll give me the desires of my heart. So that's what I'm asking for you today, is that you give me the desires of my heart. That he says, I want you to show me that you heard my voice and you're going to answer my prayer. Suddenly the clouds roll in and you hear this thundering voice. It says, I hear you. I hear you. And I'm going to give you that desire, that one desire that you want because I have checked you out and your heart is pure. He said, I gave that one desire to Solomon. And he did not let me down. He asked for wisdom. Hmm. So I'm going to let you think about it and come back and let me know what that one desire is that you would like. So the gentleman goes off to the side and he sits and thinks a little while. And he comes back and he says, Okay, God. Here's my one desire. I want to go see Hawaii, but I'm scared to fly. And I can't take a boat because I get seasick. So would you please build me a bridge from California to Hawaii that I may travel there and visit? There's a long pause, and God finally says, Seriously? This is what you ask for? Do you understand the logistics of what this is? How much concrete? How much steel? How deep the Pacific Ocean is? Don't you think this is a little materialistic? Hmm. I thought you would be better at this and and do something that would glorify me. So let's just kind of Put this one off to the side, and we'll, I'll let you try another. So this time, go really think about it. Search your heart. 
The guy leaves, and he searches his heart, and he comes back and he says, okay, God, I've got it this time. God's okay. So what do you got? You know, I've been married four times, divorced four times. I want to understand women. I want to know what they're thinking when they give me the silent treatment. Because all my wife said I didn't care and I was insensitive. I want to know what truly, truly makes them happy. I want to understand women. After a few minutes, you know what God responded? You want two lanes or four? Really? Wow, not even a smile out of you. There it is. All right. Seriously, seriously, folks, this is all about seriousness. It's time for we get serious about prayer. The promise of prayer is without limit because our God is without limits. Remember those powerful words that were spoken in Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all could ask or even imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church, in Jesus Christ, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The great and impossible things are that you are willing to call upon the Lord for. What are they? What are they? We have unlimited prayer. We just don't ask Him for it. You have blessings that you haven't asked Him for. What are you doing? Don't waste them. He loves you. He wants to bless you. We have a God who can do all things. All we have to do is call on Him. As a church, as a church, are we praying for those lost souls? Are we calling them out by name? Are you praying for your loved ones right here? Are you praying for your friends? For those who were here on Wednesday night, Officer Compton walked us through actors, active shooter training. Some of the stories that that young man has shared here brought this story to life for me, okay? Jeremiah and them and the Israelites in Babylon were going through a dark and discouraging time. Look at our community, folks. Look at our nation. What do we need? We need the church to get back to times of prayer. It's time to get serious about prayer. It's time to be on our knees praying for our government, praying for our nation, praying for our churches, and praying for our community. It's time to get serious. It says, call to me. Man, it's a command. He's commanding you to call to him. Seek me. And he says, I will answer you. Take time this week to call on him. And then take time to listen. Because he's going to answer. You just need to be quiet. Put that cell phone down. Shut your computer off. Put the tablet away. Turn the TV off. Get somewhere quiet and silent. And listen. He's going to answer you. You need time in this book. The answers to this community, the answers to this nation's right here, folks. And his name's Jesus Christ. We just got to be on our knees. It's time for us to get serious. 
R.A. Torrey. He's a fellow evangelist with du Dwight L. Moody. And he put it this way. Praying will do more. Are you listening? Praying will do more to make the church, to make the church what it ought to be than anything else that we can do. Prayer will do more to root out heresy than any and all of the heresy trials ever held. Prayer will do more to straighten out the tangles and misunderstandings, unhappy complications in the life of the church than all the councils, all the conferences ever held. Prayer will do more to bring a deep, lasting, sweeping revival. A revival that is real, lasting, and altogether made of the right stuff than all the organizations ever devised by man. Where do we see the future of the church? Where do you guys see this church in five years? Ten years? Twenty years? So what happens right here decides what happens in the future, okay? I'm just telling you. You want to see this church grow spiritually? You want to see this church grow in numbers? You want to see us reach the community that we get our butts out of the, out of the pews and chairs, get our, off our blessed assurance, as my friend would say, and uh, get out in those streets, get our butts out of the seats and in the streets. Starts right here, folks. Starts right here at these altars. And it's coming together collectively to be praying for that purpose. Let's have prayer. Fathers, we come before you. Father, we give you thanks for your words, the command that you give us that we are to pray. But Father, that, that the best part is that you will answer us. That our God, the creator of the earth, our heavenly Father, wants to spend time with us in prayer, in that communication time. Father, we just give you thanks. We ask for this time that will be a, a blessing to those that heard these words. Father, I just pray for the hearts that you open them up. You spoke into their spiritual ears, Father, and that they just heard you today. That it's time that we quit just sitting It's time that we start moving. But Father, before we move, we need to seek you first. And Father, that means we need to stop and get to our knees. Father, as, as an individual and as a church. So Father, we just give this time to you, giving you thanks that you love us that much. In your name we pray. In the name of Jesus.
thank you. Uh, right now we're going to do communion. For those uh, who will be serving, I'm going to ask you to please come forward. Here at East Harrison Street, we have open communion. So that means if you're a follower of Jesus, you know him as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to take the sacraments with us. But Before we do that, he tells us to prepare ourselves before we take the meal. So right now, we're just going to take a few moments to be quiet. I'm going to ask that you search your heart. It says, do not take of an unworthy manner. That means you've got any sin in you, you need to let go of it. If that means you need to get up and leave, so go tell somebody you're sorry and work something out, please do. So let's pray. We'll just all take this together.
On that evening, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And then he blessed it. Gordon, would you pray for the bread? May we remember what Christ gave us for us. That he loved us so much that he was willing to walk that path, be beaten, mm -hmm. yes. have chunks taken from him, have the world of crown thorns and hang on that cross, mm -hmm. that we might be forgiven for our sins when we have it and we can. Mm -hmm. I pray that we remember these things. And then he took the bread and he said, eat it. And in the same manner, he took the cup. Mike, would you bless the, the cup, please? And he said, take and drink in the remembrance of me. All right. Awesome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to close out one song. But before we do that, we talked about prayer today. I'm going to ask you to pray uh, about helping out with the donuts and the coffee if you notice, we didn't have any today, just coffee and milk. No milk, just coffee, right? Yeah. Uh, we got some folks that they're tired and uh, we need some help, okay? So if you would be interested, pray about it, let me know, and uh, we'll get you moved into that rotation. If you'd like to have donuts, that is. If not, we'll, uh, we'll all slim down a little bit, all right? <laughs> All right. Have a great week.